Hello, everyone. Dr. Robert Stanley, Smile Engineer. Welcome to another episode of Implants Made Simple. Today, I just wanted to ask you a few things. I guess I should introduce myself first of all. Uh, I'm Aaron. I work with the Stanley Institute, and I'm often behind the camera. But uh, today, I just want to talk to Dr. Rob and uh, get some insights on what's going on in the world of implant dentistry. So what's new? What's the news with implants these days? You know, I think uh, probably the hottest topic right now in my, in my ecosphere is the, what we call the Powerball screw. Uh, Powerball screw was brought to our attention about six months ago. And the advantage of the Powerball screw, it's for full arch solutions. It allows us to go completely digital. And when I say digital, I mean digital from the beginning to the end. And so uh, by utilizing this screw at the end of the process, when we're going for our, let's say, a, a try-in or for the final screw retained solution, we don't have to do a model. We don't have to print a model. We don't have to do any looting of tie copings to our final prosthesis. It's all digital. And, and, and I know if anyone out there is is getting, you know, is getting this for the first time, you're probably like already wanting to jump to the description and find out where you can order this because the workflow is so fast. I can I can take a uh, like for instance, just just today, we delivered uh, three try-ins, three try-ins in under 24 hours. So we had a patient who was from out of town. Uh, and we wanted to consolidate her time here. We didn't want to have her come back every couple of weeks to, to, to do a new try-in as, as we took in her, her, um, her desires. So what we did is we printed a try-in. We tried it in in the morning, and she gave us some feedback. We printed another one for the afternoon. She gave us some feedback. We said, go out to dinner, have a nice dinner. We'll see you back tomorrow. She gave us some feedback on the second try-in. And in the morning, she came back in the morning. We, we did a third try-in, and she absolutely loved it. But so by the time we got to the third try-in, we were done. Now, what facilitated that, what really made that special, was the ability to just print the solution, print the temporary, and literally take it right to the mouth. Like, you just print it. Take it off the printer, clean it, take it straight to the mouth, screw it in with the Powerball screw, and you're done. And that same solution, that same Powerball screw solution, is used for our monolithic zirconia finals. And so once we get to the point where the patient says, okay, I love it, don't make any changes, it's perfect. We have the digital file, we can just process the final, mill the final zirconia solution and screw that right in as well. Wow. Yeah. That's uh, significantly simpler than I think what I've seen in the past. It really is. It really is. And so with our full mouth solutions, you know, it's it's pretty well known that we have been using the InSequence stackable solution for nearly 10 years. And that's all digital up front for us from our side of the lab obviously has to do some analog work in order to get the stackable guide and prostheses made for us for the surgery. But from my perspective, Literally, once we do our records gathering at the beginning of the process on a full arch case, we're, I'm digital the entire way through, the entire wow. way through. So it's, it's just, uh, I'm very almost giddy about it. You could probably hear it in my voice because uh, this really solved the big problem with us at the end. Um, when labs get backed up and, and you want to do a turnaround, it may be six weeks, eight weeks before you get another turnaround. And remember, the patient's healed at this point. The patient is ready for their finals. They don't want to hear, we did a try-in and we have to wait six to eight weeks before we can do another try-in to make a minor refinement on the incisal embrasure of tooth number seven. They just don't want to hear that. They just want to say, well, how long does this, can we just get it over with? And they're very excited to get to those final teeth. And this really, really reduces that, that uh, overall project plan time dramatically. Absolutely, yeah. I want to eat my steak, right? Exactly, yeah go out and eat whatever it is that they haven't been able to eat during the healing process. And steak is always often one of the ones at the top of that list. I also imagine that would make your patients a lot happier with you as the doctor in that case. Yeah. If, if the patients have uh, a friend or a loved one who's actually gone through a similar process and then they go through this process, they're just blown away. Uh, we hear it all the time. They're just like, well, you know, my, wow, my friend, really went through the ringer with, you know, getting everything done at the end, whereas this is just so streamlined. It's, it's just really a benefit, not only to the patient, because they're excited about getting it done, but also to me and my, my team, because we can facilitate that end of, the, end of the process so quickly and so efficiently. 
um, that it just it just makes it really lovely for everyone. And and the digital communication is so easy. You're working with a digital file, and so you can you know take some photographs, take a new scan if you've made any refinements chair side, take a new scan, a new bite, and send it digitally to your lab. And then talk to them about the minor refinements, and they just, you know, they just push the tissue around virtually, <laughs> move, move the contacts, whatever they need to do, and then just hit print. And it's just so, so efficient. It's an amazing, amazing solution. Now, does this do anything with accuracy of that try-in? Because from the sounds of it, once you scan it, take the photographs, everything's digital from there on. I would think that would eliminate some some margins for error. It sure does. If you think about the fact that if you print a model, printing the model has inherent error in it. Anytime we do anything, there's there's tolerance stack ups, there's error associated with it. So if you print a model, there's a little bit of error. Now it might be small, but then if you're going to put tie copings on your multi units, if you're going to put a piece of metal on top of that, there may be a tolerance stack up there. Then you have cement space that you use to cement that metal tie coping to your prostheses, which then can potentially have error. So you have this whole uh, digital, or this whole analog workflow that can result in a tolerance stack up. In engineering, we call it a tolerance stack up, uh, an accumulation of error. And then it comes to the math, you go to screw it in and it's not passive. And you're wondering why is it not passive? Whereas with, the, with, the, with this method, you're just printing the final solution. So you're eliminating components when any time in engineering where we can drive the component part count down, that's a huge win. We love that. So um, my, my reference is always uh, the Glock pistol. It, it, the, the pistol of choice prior to the Glock was, you know, traditionally the, the 1911 45 caliber Browning, um, which when Glock came out with the solution for the Glock pistol, had about half as half the number of parts, literally cut the part count in half. And so from an engineering perspective, when you see that, cutting the part count in half reduces all those potential errors. Every one of those parts has to be made within a certain tolerance. And when you put all that together, it can create an enormous amount of, of variability. So part count reduction is, is a paramount uh, thing that we do in engineering. And when we're engineering these solutions for the mouth, we want to drive the part count down. And so by going through this digital workflow where we don't have to do a model, we don't have to do a chair side looting, it streamlines the process as we mentioned, but in addition, it can make the overall process a whole lot more accurate. So can you tell me a little bit more about the Powerball screw itself? Like what is this as a part? How is that manufactured? So the, the Powerball screw was manufactured by a dentist. And what's neat about it is, is that the underside of the screw, instead of having a shoulder, it has a spherical contour. Now, what that means is, is that when you're taking it straight into zirconia, zirconia is a strong material, but it's also brittle. Okay, so with that strength, you come some, some brittleness. The problem with that is that if you use the traditional profile of a traditional a prosthodontic screw, a pros screw, the little blue ones typically, they have a sharp edge. And if you put a sharp edge on a brittle material, you create a, a stress concentration point. And that stress concentration point can propagate into a crack. And the easiest way to, uh, to see this in your mind is if you've taken an art course or a crafts course and you've worked with stained glass, the way you cut a brittle, strong piece of glass is you score it with a very small score line, and then you put a little bit of pressure on it and the glass will break right on that score line. So if we were to use a traditional prosthodontic screw, which has a shoulder margin that's very sharp, it's acting like that little score that you place on glass. And thus, if you did that, you would likely have all of, every one of your prosthodontic solutions for zirconia would probably break. And so this dentist was smart enough to know that, it, that they have to have a different kind of screw. And what they did is on the bottom side, instead of having that sharp edge, they have a rounded profile, a spherical profile. And what that does is it allows to, the ability of the stresses to flow radially out from the screw into the surrounding body of the zirconia. So there's no stress concentration points, thus minimizing your potential for fracture. And so we've been using the screw for about six months 
at this point uh, with 100% success. We haven't had any fractures. We haven't had any breakage uh, around the screw or anything. So I'm terribly excited about this because it literally is utopia in terms of this digital workflow. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, it sounds like it's going to be hard to beat. Yeah, yeah. I, I think if anything... Uh, what we'll probably see is fast followers coming to the market with their versions of screws that are going to be similar to this because what this uh, product does in the way of streamlining the timeline, reducing the part count, um, in addition to, there's a, there's a third advantage, which we haven't spoken about, which is it reduces the expense. So it, let's say you had a monolithic zirconia final solution that was going to be screw retained. And then the lab needs to buy, say, it's an all-on six. They have to buy six tie copings and then loot those tie copings to the inside of the, of the final prosthesis. Well, those tie copings cost money. So each one of those tie copings is an expense to the dental practice. And then obviously it, it would be passed on in some form or fashion to the patient, right? But if you go with the Powerball screw, there is no tie coping. There is, there is no extra part. So you save on all of those part costs because you have less parts. So, you know, timeline, uh, ease of use, uh, longevity, and cost are all being solved by this solution. Now, obviously, big manufacturers of, of uh, implants will recognize that they're going to be uh, losing a little bit of money if they, uh, if they create screws that that eliminate that component that they're currently selling. But uh, surely they can see that with all of these numerous advantages that the writing's on the wall, they can either get on board and start making their own, you know, uh, direct to abutment screw uh, for full mouth solutions, or they're just going to get passed up because people are just going to continue to use a product that works for them. Future is now, I suppose. Yeah. So Powerball screw sounds like that's the new news for today. Do you want to close us out? Sure. This has been another edition of Implants Made Simple. I'm Dr. Robert Stanley, Smile Engineer, out.